Welcome to a demonstrative and explanatory video on a working model of renal hemodynamics based on Hage Poisley law. It is presented to you by Team Hydraulics from Ames Rajkot, Gujarat. This is a model apparatus showing a shower head in the center of this image representing glomerular apparatus. The tube to the right represents afferent arteriole and the tube on the left represents the efferent arteriole. The beaker below, the glomerular apparatus fills with glomerular filtrate and the one draining out efferent arteriole fills with efferent arteriolar outflow. Using this apparatus, we'll demonstrate three scenarios starting with normal unconstricted arteriolar outflow with the shown setting. After that, for demonstrating flow with afferent arteriole constricted, the vessel depicting the same would be clamped with a black paper clip. The clamped vessel simulates a vessel the smaller diameter. For the next scenario, similar setting would be used for efferent arteriole. Now we'll watch some demonstrative clips for each of these scenarios. Normal flow. Afferent arteriolar constriction. Efferent arteriolar constriction. Moving on to the observational analysis of the results obtained. The change in results are due to afferent arteriolar constriction which reduces both the GFR and the efferent arteriolar flow. This results from efferent arteriolar constriction which reduces the flow in efferent arteriole so we get reduced efferent arteriolar flow but GFR gets increased which increases the amount of glomerular filtrate collected. The concept demonstrated here is hage poise law. Its simple reinterpretation shows us that vascular resistance is inversely proportional to fourth power of diameter of that vessel. This explains why constriction in a vessel reduces the flow ahead of it and increases the flow preceding it. In the end, I'd like to acknowledge the team effort and thank you for watching. Hello, Peeping Brainiacs. We present Ames Rajkot and today we're going to present our model. This is depicting the movements of the eye. So the topic was physics and physiology and adhering to it we have chosen to depict the agonistic and antagonistic effects of the muscles facilitating the movement of the eye. Basically for facilitating almost any movement we need an agonist muscle also known as the prime mover and an antagonist muscle. The agonist contracts and causes the movement while the antagonist relaxes and stretches to allow the movement. Let's understand this with the help of the model. So the human eye has muscles known as medial rectus and lateral rectus which are responsible for causing side to side movement of the eyeball. For causing medial movement, the muscle medial rectus has to contract. It acts as the prime mover and the muscle lateral rectus attached oppositely acts as antagonist and allows the movement by relaxing itself. Similarly, for lateral movement, the lateral rectus acts as the prime mover while the medial rectus acts as the antagonist. For superior movement, the superior rectus acts as the prime mover while the inferior rectus acts as the antagonist. And for the inferior movement, the inferior rectus acts as the prime mover and the superior rectus acts as the antagonist. Such movements use concepts of physics such as torque, where the force applied by the muscle acts from a distance from the axis. The greater the distance, the greater is the torque. The physiological concept of muscle tone finds its roots in physical concepts such as tension along a fiber. The normal tone of the muscle helps to keep the eye in the normal position. This tone is due to the tension of the muscle fibers. We have depicted this tension in our model using threads that are taut when eye is in the normal position. 
working of the model. We've used the concept of hydraulics to facilitate the movements of the muscles. Two syringes are connected via a tube and water is used as the hydraulic fluid. One syringe acts as the muscle analog and the other acts as a controller. When the plunger of the controller is pressed, the plunger of the muscle analog is pushed forwards. This plunger has been connected to thread which ultimately attaches at the insertion of a rectus muscle. Taking medial movement as an example, the working of this model can be explained. As already discussed, the medial rectus will act as the agonist and the lateral rectus as the antagonist. To generate the movement, the plunger of the medial rectus is pulled back, representing contraction of the muscle, and the plunger of the lateral rectus is pushed forward, representing the relaxation of the antagonist. This ultimately results into the medial movement. Similarly, all the movements may it be superior, inferior or lateral are generated. It is worthwhile to notice how the thread of the antagonist loosens depicting relaxation and the agonist tightens representing contraction. The making of this model has been both a challenge and a delightful experience. Thank you for watching.